What up, creators? Before we hop into this episode, I want to remind you about our community at jointhehomies.com. The homies are the squad of legends who support what we do here at Black Window Cream so we can continue to build this platform into the best educational space for content creators on earth. And in return for that support, we give you a bunch of sick perks all month long, like access to our live stream tutorials and hangouts, bonus podcast episodes, and so much more. Check us out at jointhehomies.com. Let's go! Welcome back to another Black Window Cream podcast, new episode every single Wednesday and Sunday. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, aka Ben Real Verse World. Now, normally on Sundays, we release one on one interviews with industry leading creatives, but this quarantine shit is fucking everything up. And we want to respect the social distancing rules and stay away from each other. So, for the time being, we present you with a new segment called Quarantine and Chill. Each episode, I call up a few of my creative homies to see how they're holding up during this lockdown and squeeze some creator tips and advice out of them to give back to all of you. All right, let's uh, let's stop playing this fucking song so I can get a little bit more serious and introduce today's guest. Darren, drop that beat. Today we have some exciting guests on the podcast. First up, Jaquel Knight. Jaquel is a superstar choreographer, best known for his work with artists like Beyonce, Jay-Z, Pharrell, Shakira, and many, many more. In this episode, we talk about the recent actions he's taken to support his fellow dance community by starting the Dancer Relief Fund, which he plans to raise $150,000 within 30 days to distribute to dancers in need around the world. We talk about his work with Shakira choreographing her Super Bowl performance and the mind a choreographer needs to have when entering an environment like the Super Bowl. This is his third Super Bowl that he's choreographed, which means this motherfucker is a legend. Next, we have my guy Nick Mahar. Nick is a cinematographer best known for his docu-series covering Macklemore's The Heist Tour, his amazing one-take music video with Logic called Take It Back, and many, many other commercial projects. We discuss the quick action that he and other filmmakers have started to take to help 3D print mass amounts of face shields for frontline workers, how he decided to pivot his DP work from the music industry into commercial production, and he weighs in on the importance of learning each department of the production industry so you can be a better team player. So far, so good. This episode is stacked. Lastly, we have a previous podcast guest gracing us with his presence today, Israel Shoots. Israel is best known for his work filming the day-to-day content with Anderson Pack. In this episode, we chat about how he started to take on new client work, how he's killing time by starting a vlog on his YouTube channel, and he tells the craziest story about his first time working with Wiz Khalifa, which was also his first time flying on a private jet. This shit is fucking funny. We hope you enjoy these conversations today. If you want to support the podcast, A, obviously follow us on Instagram at Black Window Cream. Subscribe to us on any podcast platform. But do us a favor. Grab the link to whatever platform you're using to listen to this podcast and text it to a homie. Send it to a homie in a message, a private message, a Facebook message, a fucking DM, a MySpace message. We don't care. Send it to a homie and tell them like, yo, I think this could help you if you think it could help them actually. Uh, Because that just does, you know, it helps us keep this thing growing and helps us spread the word. Um, But if this is your first time tuning the podcast, you're probably wondering. What the fuck is Black With No Cream? Great question. Black Window Cream is the illest educational resource for content creators fueled by caffeine. Or at least I take my coffee Black Window Cream, but you can drink or not drink whatever caffeine you fuck with and still be a part of our community. We have thousands of members from all around the world working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of pushing each other to become the best motherfucking content creators on earth. And you can join our private group if you want to by going to bwnc.com slash join. We would love to fucking have you. Please join. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Jaquel Knight is in the building. What's happening? Yeah, you like that? You're, what are you at? Your studio right now? You're at your, your dance studio? Yeah, I'm in my little um, home, my home dance studio, chilling. Yeah, that's a nice, nice little setup that you added to your crib. That's dope. So what, you get to practice and come up with ideas in that space? That's like your place to be creative? Or do you bring people over there to like, when you're not practicing so- safe social distancing, do you bring people in there to like work on ideas with you? Yeah, you know, I get my, like Dorena come over here all the time. You know, she assists me on a lot of joints. So we come in here, we work out stuff, figure things out, look at stuff, review things. You know, before- it's nice to have a little on dance studio. Because before you would have to like go go rent a studio or something just to be able to go take over the spot, right? Yeah, that's pretty convenient. And then the good thing too, you know, before COVID, you know, we were about to like rent it out for for all of my rehearsals that I had coming up. What rent out a space? Rent out this space. Oh, I was for real? Run my dance rehearsals here. Oh wow! 
Yeah, so that just put a stop to that. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. So first off, we know, we so I've been trying to get you on the podcast for like forever, but you're always traveling to London and fucking pretty much everywhere on earth doing dope shit. Um, sure. But we got to get to know each other during the you know the process of preparing for Coachella, which you and Chris um, choreographed the entire Coachella performance with Beyonce, which was fucking ludicrous. And you've talked about it a million times, I'm sure, at this point, um, <laughs> because you're a legend. And since then, then we did the touring and everything together. So you're an exciting person to have on here because, you know, you're just talented as hell and I'm excited to get you on here. But I want to talk about, you know, as a choreographer whose main source of income is coming from choreographing music videos, uh, con live concerts, you know what I mean? All these different types of subjects, everything's at a stop. So I want to know how this is really affecting you and, and the grind that you're used to doing every day. Because I saw you make a tweet or a post the other day that you're like, you miss work. Uh, and then I think when you're working, you're like, man, I need a vacation. So it's all, <laughs> where are you at in life right now? You know, it's different every day. You know, I have my ups and downs. Some days I'm, some days I roll out of bed and I'm like, okay, boom, let's figure, let's figure it out. You know, let's make some calls. Let's start to prepare, you know, for the future, you know, still prep things. And some days I'm like, uh, let's just keep rolling over, you know, um, but for the most part, you know, I'm doing really well. You know, um, things were really crazy. Like you said, COVID has put a stop to all things um, that I do. You know, for me, this is festival season right now. You know, we're we're supposed to be going into weekend two of Coachella. Um, Pharrell, something in the water was coming up in two weeks after this, at the end of the month. Um, so this is a very, very busy time for me, um, for my staff, for my dancers. Um, yeah, so, I mean, the reality of it is it kind of sucks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's facts. It is fact. Wait, but so for Coachella, what did were you working on projects for Coachella? Did you have any artists you were working with for that? Yeah, I had three acts I was going to do for Coachella. Who were you doing? I can't tell you. Tight. Cause Coachella, <laughs> Co 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 Coachella probably, it hasn't happened yet and it could still happen. All right. I see you. Um, and then you obviously work close with Pharrell. So you were part of that whole operation with his. Yeah. Festival. And you know, we had literally before everything went to a shutdown, we had literally had our creative meeting, um, for something in the water, you know, like how many dancers I had just put the dancers on hold. We had just started to talk set lists. We had just started to figure out the flow of show. We started to figure out the guest acts that we were going to have. Right. Um, I mean, it was yeah. going to be a fucking movie. Yeah. I know we, we just did a live stream with uh, um, Nick, who's the choreogra uh, choreographer for Justin Bieber, and he uh -huh. was talking about the process, too, for them. Bieber was supposed to go on a huge tour for, like, I don't know how many, it looked like a thousand dates. But they were preparing that. And for me getting to work with you, I see how long you guys were working on Coachella. You were working on Coachella even before, obviously I jumped in the picture, yep. but there's a lot of time and energy that goes to working on these projects that are long-term. Um, and a lot of people bank on that. So like you may have thought, when, when is something in the water? When's that festival? That was like the 26th weekend of April 26th. Okay. So for a lot of creators or for a lot of dancers and stuff, if you get booked for a gig, you're looking at like, oh, cool. This is going to cover the next like four months of my life. Like a financially B that's going to keep me busy with work. So I'm, I'm set. And then all of a sudden it comes to a halt and you're completely shut down. And what I think is really cool about what you did was you immediately started trying to find solutions to help the dance community, yeah. um, which I think you do so well. Obviously you provide in, insight and value with your March madness thing that you do and, and you've been doing a lot of stuff like that, but you offered like a meal, like, I don't know what, 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 how do you, what do you call it? Like where you offered meals for dancers? Yeah. So basically once everything shut down, you know, and for me, um, I love my job. I love what I do. I love the people I get to work with, but I also love the opportunity I'm able to provide others, you right. know? And like you said, when we work, we're working. We're working for, you know, a month, a month and a half, two months preparing for this thing. And usually I'll get my staff, whoever I'm dancing with, we're doing multiple things. I try to have people du double up on gigs, you know, so you're getting two checks right. at, you know, at some point of it. Um, so looking at that list, I was going to put 70, I was putting 75 dancers on hold, mm. you know, for the next two months. And, you know, immediately I thought like, damn, you know, like 
these people were is going to be no work. <laughs> Literally, they're not going. It's no checks coming in. Right. And, um, so I immediately thought of those people I was about to hire. You know, so many times I hire people and they're like, Jaquel, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. You know, I was on my last, you know, on my last few dollars. You know, I was just about to get put out of my place. You know, I've heard so many of these stories. And um, so it's a big deal to me when um, I can't hire my people and put people on. Right. Um, it hurts in a way, you know? So immediately I thought of those people. And the first thing that, um, that I did was a meal giveaway. Literally, um, every table is a restaurant, but kind of meal prep kind of thing. They have a location over by USC that I even go to at times just cause they have really good meals. And the whole thing is like basing the pricing off of, the income of the neighborhood is in, mm, you know. Um, so, like over by USC, you could go and get like a a meal. It'll cost like five dollars and fifty cents, six bucks, you know, just because the community is all college kids. Right. You know, if you go to the Wayne Westwood, that same meal may cost you seven bucks. Right. Um, you know, so, so they're really about the community. So for me, I relate well and have a organic and true connection with the company. So I reached out and was like, yo, how can I get meals to my people? Um, so we partner, um, right. And I ended up donating 2,500 meals to the community. Jesus, that's crazy. What was the company's name? What? Every table, every table. Cool. So you, yeah, that's what's ill is that you were able to, with your, I don't know, clout from doing all the things that you do, you're able to utilize that too as leverage to help your community, which is so sick. So you being able to partner with them and put 2,500 meals in dancers' stomachs that just, uh, even though, yeah, it, it could be like a meal, it's eight bucks or whatever, but yo, like right now, people are stressing. Every every dollar counts now, mm -hmm. you know? Especially if we're looking at being quarantined for another two months, three months. You know, and things not being able to get back to normal for another year. We're right. not gonna be. A, we're not gonna do a festival, a concert till fall next year. That blows my mind. I can't. I can't wrap <laughs> my head around it. Right. I know. But that's, <laughs> but that's. But that's why I saw you do so. Moving. You know, you did that, which was really ill. And then shortly after, like literally a week later, you announced this dancers relief fund. Um, and what I love is that to, to even promote it, you guys were sharing that. Uh, health, you quote, healthcare experts predict concerts and festivals will not return until fall 2021, which is insane, <laughs> insane. So, and that goes for not just dancing, but then you have sports games, like all football, basketball, soccer, all these things that bring in hundreds of thousands of people weekly are completely can't. So, so many people are suffering from this. And especially we just did an interview with, um, an accountant to talk to, about gig workers. Cause we all don't know what the hell to do. Like you, where do you apply for grants? How do you get loans? Especially you talking about these people are almost on their last dollar and then they bank on that job and it goes away. What do we do? Cause we, do we, we don't know we can file for unemployment and things like that. Yeah. But what one thing that you added to it was this dancers relief fund. So can you kind of go into that? Because you, is it, it says raising $150,000. Yeah. So that's my goal. Um, is the, do this dance relief fund. My goal for this first pass um, is to raise one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Right. You know, and through that, I think we can go and help fifteen thousand people. Um, you know, my goal is to give out grants, and the meal drive was really successful here in LA. So I think we should do that again, if mm -hmm. possible. We also want to do the same thing in Atlanta. Um, New York has a system set up for people to go and get free meals at, right now. So, but so we'll give literally checks to these people. Um, I also got hit up by people in Vegas, you know, saying that they need some sort of relief, you know. So it's to kind of help all these dancers in these major markets, right. you know. Um, and it's also an opportunity for those people that we work with, work so hard for, um, pour up everything we have into our crap to put it on for these people, you know, it's to provide them with the opportunity to give back to us as well. Right. So, um, so that's what, that's how I'm looking at this, you know? Do you, do you think it's like, 
does this come from from you? Because this obviously right now you got to worry about your own life, right? Like yep. the stress of this. Every it's every man for themselves. We're out here stressing, trying to figure out like how the hell do we navigate through these waters that we don't know. Everyone's repositioning their business or trying to find new ways to like get their their money. Um, mm-hmm. And you're taking a chance to. Like I was trying to get you on the podcast like two days ago and your assistant's telling me like, yo, phone calls dialed in, like a bunch of meetings, Zoom meetings, et cetera, whatever, because you're dealing with all these people that are calling you, which is just you taking time out of your day to try to help others. Does this come from you, you know, having now the credits that you have, but take it back before you had these credits. Are you thinking about yourself in those shoes and like where you were at then? And that's the reason why you're starting to do this? Yeah, I mean, for me, Everyone thinks, you know, I've always had a big, you know, they see the names, they see the Beyonce's on your credit, they see the Shakira's, the Jennifer Lopez's, you know, the Jay-Z's, the Big Sean's, all the, all the names, they see right. all the names and it's like, oh, you don't know what it was like. No, I was a struggling dancer, you know, who just had a dream of making it. Right. And I really wanted to make it, you know, um, so I know what it's like being in a apartment or one bedroom with six people and you just wanting to dance right no your dream is to dance Hmm. be able to dance every day literally i know what that's like so now to be in a position where we're stripped almost literally people are gonna have to go back home you know that's terrifying to me because i know what it's like being that kid who saved up that last did work that last hour at mcdonald's and it's like, boom, you guys, I'm leaving on Monday. I'm going right. to L.A. You know what I'm saying? That's real life. You yeah. know, you get out here and you can't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Imagine that kid right now, you know, that adult, that professional, that creative. You know, yeah. that's heartbreaking. You know, um, so for me, it's all about I, I don't want people to lose hope you know, or give up on their magic or lose their sauce during this time, you know? So I'm doing whatever I can to keep people's spirits up, you know, which I think is important for us to also have during this time, you know, right. um, and let people know, okay, you're in, we're in this together. It's not just you, you're not alone. Right. Um, that's, that's why I feel like my calling has been through all of this, you know, how can, um, how can I still provide? You know, right. it's something about me being able to provide opportunity. How can I do that now when people really need it most? That's mm-hmm. been my most, that's been on my heart since the start of this. Um, so like right now I'm planning a big fundraiser outside of the dancer relief and to kind of bring more eyeballs, you know, I'm bringing, I'm planning like a big dance fundraiser that I'm hoping to partner with um, Facebook on, um, that would that's going to be crazy you know yeah. um and bring more attention to the dancer relief you know so for me it's all about how can we still keep people up lifted not give up because you know i have my days i know i feel like shit sometimes you know just sitting in the house you know you i know we all want to be like yeah go do this yeah use this time to do this okay think of this but some days you don't want to do that yeah right you know <laughs> you yeah. just want to you just kind of, and it's okay to just feel, to feel your emotions and to be in it. Right. Like, you know, it's a real thing. What's happening is real. You know, people are dying. People are losing their lives. Loved ones every day. Hundreds of people, thousands of people are out of here, you know? Um, you know, but it's like, we can't dwell on that, but how do we get through it together? Right. How, right. how do we get through it? Mm. So for your goal is to try to pull to raise 150k in 30 days over the next 30 days and i'm really giving myself my personal goal is to raise it by this time next week damn <laughs> are, are, are you are you are you allowing people to see your progress so is it like a is it like a gofundme scenario or is this this fund have their- it's on gofundme yep part of the um donations are on gofundme which is that has raised um Five over five k right now Dope. in the past day, and then it's also a company I'm working with, Giving. They do this sort of, um, they have a platform where they allow people to come and raise money for charitable um, things. Right. So we have that for our corporate sponsors and small business sponsors. Right. That's cool. 
how else can people get involved if they're, if they're listening right now and are interested in helping you? What, what would you ask people to do if they have a platform or if there's some, you know, I mean, obviously everyone can just say, Hey, give money. Uh, is there anything else that you think that would, that would help your cause and help raise this money for these dancers who need it? I think the best thing we can do right now is share, share the information with your network, let people know, um, get the word out there. Even if you cannot donate or if you can only donate eight bucks, two bucks, a dollar, you know, a hundred bucks, it all counts. Mm -hmm. And, um, my people, my community, my family, my friends, we all need it right now. You know, um, a lot of my friends just had kids, you know, there's a lot of new new um, mothers and fathers out there that's in the dance community. Um, there's a lot of dancers out there who was waiting for that big Coachella chat. There was a lot of people who was planning to go on tour. You know, all of their work has been canceled. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we need it, need it, need it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that we link to in the description with, um, the, whatever you want me to put for the, the fund. So if anyone wants to donate there and check it out, you can do that. And then also I can loop in the, the accounting thing that we did last week where, so you can hear about all the different options that are out there outside of this to help you benefit if you are a dancer or if you are a gig worker in general, um, cause it's videographers, photographers, we all do, it's all the same boat, you know? Um, okay. So this is also too a relief, like it's not just dancers too, you know, the relief is like, if you work at, in, in any capacity with the performance industry, you know, mm -hmm. if you're a makeup artist, if you're a stylist, if you're a videographer, you know, and you've been on these tours and you work in the same environment, it's for all of us. It's for right. the creatives. Yeah. I love that. Um, to switch, to switch it up a little bit, uh, on a, you know, little, you know, another stint, what the last big job you did was the Super Bowl. Maybe obviously you started working on these secret projects that you can't talk about yet, but where did you do anything else after the Super Bowl since then? After the Super Bowl, I hopped right into, um, Coachella. Coachella. Right. So, so can we talk about the Super Bowl for a second? Let's talk about it. Uh, ridiculous, man. Like what the hell? And I know you were working on that for some time. Like how long did you guys prepare for that performance? Let's see. Me and Shakira, we had, when I came on board with her, we had two shows to prepare for. It was Super Bowl was the later one. And then we had a show before Super Bowl, which was the David's Cup, um, which was like, let's say the World Cup of Tennis. Oh, okay, word. And that happened in Madrid. You That's know, wild. Um, and it was, a, it was a big deal for her. She was kind of the headliner entertainer for that. Right. Um, yeah, so I mean, I started with her. I met with her end of October. Um, and then two weeks later, we started in November, you know, November getting together for the Davis Cup. And then through that, you know, once we kind of got that under order, we started prepping just throwing ideas for a Super Bowl. Right. What? We really, I think we were really late to the game prepping for the Super Bowl, but it came together. I think. What, what do you, what's like the biggest stresses for a choreographer for? a Super Bowl performance, something on that scale, like obviously one of the top watched things in the world. I, honestly, I bet you start choreographing a lot of shit for uh, gamer streamers because it sounds like they're getting even in more insane numbers than the Super Bowl does at this point, which would be sick. <laughs> uh, but for the Super Bowl being America's like pastime favorite thing, blah, 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 and the halftime performance is like the main reason why people watch this outside of football, right? And commercials. What is some of the stresses you deal with to, to make sure you're executing on that high of a level with the Super Bowl experience that you have now? For me, this was my third Super Bowl. And yeah. not only was I choreographed, and I was also doing creative. Um, you know, so I was really, it was really me and Shakira. And, you know, one of my bigger, the biggest, most stressful part of it with me was I hadn't been working with Shakira for 10 years, five years, you know. So through our building this show, you know, I'm also, we're figuring out how we work together, our vibe, the chemistry, mm -hmm. which is also really important when you're putting on the show. Right. You know, um, like working with B, I've been with B for 11 years, 12 years now, you know, so I know how to go in the room. I know how she's going to respond to things. I know what I need to have prepared to show her when she walk in this day. I know the things that me and you need to work on, you know what I'm saying, as, okay, 
Ben, come shit this so I can go and show B real quick. You know, right. I know, I know how we work. Yeah. Um, so when you're working with someone new, it's someone new. You know, you don't know what to expect. And like you said, the Super Bowl is the biggest deal of all deals. It's the biggest show in the world. Um, as far as halftime performances, all eyes are on you, millions and millions. Um, so for me, I was super stressed with, you know, beyond making sure I put on a good show, I also wanted to do something that Shakira was super proud of right? You know, and be there for her and um, being able to collaborate with her and make sure she was doing something that she also felt was putting on for her people. You know, and I think that's why we connected. She felt like just through the work she's seen for me, felt super authentic. So um, she can feel the love in it, you know. So I really wanted to make sure everything that I bring to all of my other projects, I came with the same luggage to her as right. well, you know. Yeah. So it was really important that we built something that was authentic and true to her. Um, and not just all about trendy steps, but something that, you know, people in Colombia is like, yeah, she's from here. You know, right. that girl just like me. She's doing what we're doing. Right. You know, um, Which takes a lot of preparation and you you understand the culture and bringing the cultures and colliding cultures. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you guys do so yes. well. You know, taking what I do and letting it make sense for her and her Latin world. Right. Um, I and, love you know, that. she speaks Spanish. She's a Spanish chick, too. You know, so that's also was hard. Mm. Like, she she speaks English, but when it's time to talk, it's Spanish. Right. Yeah. You know, um, so that was another thing too. You know, me, I, as much as I should know Spanish, shut down. No hablo español. Hey, they, they made me exempt out of Spanish, bro. I couldn't handle just, I had to focus on just English. So that's a true story right there. I swear to God. <laughs> um, all right. I know you got to go. You're a busy person. I want to wrap this up. Two more things. Um, first, uh, why did y'all pick me to shoot the opening shot of Coachella because that's the illest shot oh, in my life. That, Don't that's it's about you. I need to know. I you had that gig a lot because you were shooting all the references. Uh, but you guys were literally like, I think you got to go out here and try this real quick. I don't even remember if it was like the original idea or something. And then, and then it turned into it literally the day of that shit of shooting the weekend one. I don't know how to explain to, I don't know if I ever told you this, the way my, um, my uh, legs were shaking walking to be, and then having to turn, when I got to her and had to start walking backwards, in that moment I was like, why did they pick me up? I'm just gonna sit down. I felt like I was gonna fall and sit Indian style because I just couldn't function anymore. I'm like, why did I get picked for that shit? Sorry, man, you was right there. You was you was right there with us through it all and who else? Yeah, I know, but. The other person. I love Thank it. God, those legs did not get that though. Yeah, the, the way you guys designed that shot though is like the illest thing for me because the way it all functioned and the way we were like so you guys are so on par with like exactly what you see in vision you know what i mean and timing and everything so i'm honored to be a part of that that was that was fun as hell um yeah, crazy people don't understand the work that went into that you know like i tell people like me and ed sat in there and scripted that whole show and like we took that was like a 14 hours to script i know <laughs> yeah, you guys are. It was the it was eye opening for me to watch it, and I remember it being. I remember loving it. Uh, I'm saving this shit for your full interview when you come in here after when we can stop quarantine. Uh, okay, last thing. What what are you doing outside of you know obviously all the work you've been talking about to pass time at home that you would recommend to other people? Is there anything that you're picking up, watching shows, books, anything that you're kind of like studying or taking advantage of during this downtime that you might have? Is there anything you can leave the people? Um. For me, I'm spending a lot of time just listening to myself and meditating. Um, cooking is a super therapeutic for me, so I've been cooking a lot. Thank God I've um, been home. Um, I'm also doing stuff around the house that I said I was going to do ages ago. This is my first time. I've been in my place for a year, and this is the longest I've been here. So I've been able to put up posters, put up picture frames. I've been putting up shelves. Um, my handyman came over and taught me, I got a new drill. He taught me how to properly use it. So I've been drilling holes in the wall, putting shit up. Um, I got my studio up and running. Yeah, there you go. You know, um, everything, I think it's a great time. Everything that you said, okay, I'm gonna do that. I need to do that. This is the perfect time to do all of those things. Mm. You know, yeah. and also don't get caught up in the pressure of feeling like you have 
to do something awesome. Right. You know, I know everyone's like, go, go, go. But if you don't feel it, don't do it. But yeah. like make a list, three things a day, you know, boom, don't overwhelm yourself. Okay. If I right. did one, two and three, boom, you had a perfect day. Yeah. Take it day by day. I love that. All right, man. Well, I appreciate your time. Appreciate you. You're doing some awesome shit for the community. And I think that people are really going to, it's going to help a lot of people, you know? Yeah. That's the part I'm really excited about. There's well, people out there that really need it. So it's awesome to be a vessel to yeah. them. No, nah, you're great at that. I, I applaud you. And uh, thanks again for doing this. Thanks, Ben. I can't yeah. wait to see you. All right, ah. man. <laughs> Thank you, Jaquel, for coming on the podcast. I appreciate you. Um, all the links will be in the description for Jaquel to follow him, as well as all the uh, information that we were talking about during the interview. Um, highly suggest you take a look at that shit. All right, next up, we have Nick Mahar. We're about to jump into that right now. All right, I'm starting this right now. Nick is on the <laughs> Nick is on the stream with us on Zoom here, and right away, you're showing me the most interesting thing ever. What is this? Uh, this is a 3D printer. This is one specifically from Creality. Uh, a bunch of filmmakers are 3D printing these headbands, um, which are we're donating to hospitals around the country. Um, it's basically it's not like a what is it? I forget MP5 or whatever 95 masks, um, right. but they're more like face shields. Um, so it's not as good as those, but at least it's you know somebody can't spit on uh, a doctor or a nurse anything like that, and it helps um, keep people safe that are working with you know people that are sick or infected with coronavirus. You know what I say about that? What? <laughs> <laughs> and also, yes, that's you fucking, have to do the air horn. That the is amazing. Is the most important part. <laughs> that is amazing. So, damn, bro, that's sick. I didn't know. Yeah, so you said there's like a, a filmmaker community that's doing this, like everyone that just has access to 3D printers have been have been banging these out? Yeah, there's, um, oh man, uh, Andrew, I forget Andrew's last name. Um, Kramer? It, it, I uh, made a started doing it with his 3D printer, and then I know a couple other filmmakers like Mike Reyes, who's another DP, um, and some ACs and other people started joining in because they had 3D printers. Um, and I actually didn't have a 3D 3D printer up until uh, probably a couple weeks ago, but I had been wanting to get one, um, so I took it as an opportunity. So um, I think let me see, there's a website called I think it's 3DAgentsOfShield.com. That's like what they created. Yeah. Um, and they're super efficient. Um, Andrew, basically everything gets shipped to Andrew's house. They box it up um, and they ship it out all over the world or all over the country and stuff. Um, and Dude, I think we're, amazing. I think they just hit 10,000. Let's see, there's 13,000 ordered right now. Uh, and they've delivered almost 9,000 and we have 92 printers going. That's so um, fire, man. Yeah. That's, it's that's been, incredible. This is with the plastic part. So yeah. It, protects a little bit but not not completely but just enough to right you know be better than nothing yeah it is better than nothing no that's amazing that's that's you know if you have access to that stuff please act on that now because that that's super helpful my mom's she works on the her her floor she's a manager of a floor uh post-surgical floor at um oh, wow. her hospital and now they just deem that floor the covid floor so like their frontline you know what i mean them yep. to the grocery store workers bro like it's, yep. They just finally put up a shield between us and the grocery store clerk, but then the clerk behind me, there's no shield there. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, just yep. make this, build a box, like build forts. I don't care if it looks ugly. Like, this is just so crazy that these people are having to be in contact with potentially getting the virus every day. So shout out to you because that shit helps a lot, man. That's that's pretty sick. Um, yeah, definitely. That's a great way to start the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have some friends that are doctors in New York too that um, I went to high school with and they're just like, you know, obviously there's mixed feelings about uh, certain things and other places in the country aren't getting hit as, as hard. Um, and so like people are like, oh, it's fake or this or that. And I'm like, I'm talking to somebody that's in New York right now dealing with it. His entire like I think he, last week when I talked to him, half his unit um, uh, had gotten sick and wow. contracted coronavirus. So they were out and then now they're back. Um, so they're getting tested for antibodies and stuff. But it's it's pretty crazy. And, um, you know, just trying to do whatever we can to help. Um, cause it's not right. easy. Jesus Christ, man. Well, now we know what you've been up to as a filmmaker during quarantine. That's pretty amazing. Uh, this is exciting. All right. So this is mad random because, um, you hit me on Instagram yesterday and then right away I was like, Oh shit, I know you, but I was like, you know, how Instagram is yeah. like somebody, whatever. And I've been following your work for mad long. Did we meet each other at one point? Did that I don't happen? know. 
I I feel like we did because you look really familiar and stuff. But and when I look at all your stuff, I'm like I I know you from somewhere, but I don't know. That's the part. That's the I hard part with social media is I don't know if I've met somebody in person Facts. or just on social. Well, so this was dope. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little backstory. And it, whenever you're in LA next, and we can so, not have to social distance, please come and sit down right over here. And do I live podcast. in LA actually. Do now. you? Yeah. But you're from Seattle. I'm from uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, shit, we here. So as soon as this is up and over with, please <laughs> yes. come through and sit down. I want to do like, normally on Sundays we do like full, you know, extended interviews, but yeah. during this time we just switch it up. But um, backstory just so for you is when I lived in Iowa six years ago and beyond that last like 10 years of my life, I remember um, sitting in my parents' basement. I built a recording studio. I made a bunch of music and shit. Long story short, I would watch and consume every piece of content I could get to understand what the outside world of creativity is like. And I remember when Macklemore dropped his tour docs um, and being so fucking pissed that someone else got access to this beta movie um, and and, (laughs) and got to test it and also went on tour with an artist and brought... You guys shot on Reds? Yeah, we had a couple of reds. Yeah, you had a couple of reds on a, to- a rap tour where all I ever wanted was like, man, if I could just get on those tours, I would fuck that shit up. I'm gonna do X, Y, Z and just kill it. And then I would, I would literally make everyone watch. I'd watch every episode and just keep rewatching every episode. I'm like, check this out, check this out, check this out, check this out, and I just digest that shit. And then, you know, skip a few years, I moved out to LA and whatever, and I went on yeah, tour with Schoolboy Q and yep. Macklemore walked in, and I was finally, I was like hell yeah like the, you are the reason why my videos are like they are you know is because yep. of your content and and then he like props me up on on the content i was making for q and it was like a good full circle moment but you uh are a man behind the camera and were a part of that project and so i just gotta applaud you on that bro because you guys set a fucking bar back then like <laughs> like for real it motivated the hell out of me to watch that shit so so good work but uh you what what, what have you been up to since then you i, I saw your post can kind of uh doing a full circle on your, on your 29th birthday. It's yeah. Cool I mean, I've, I've been, so like I've been doing stuff since I was like six and trying to learn, you know, just like your, your community and stuff is just trying to learn a bunch of different aspects and stuff like that. So I've been all over the place and, uh, me and one of my really good friends, uh, Patrick Lumberg, he's a director. Uh, we subscribe to like the David Fincher method of like kind of learning every aspect of filmmaking, um, and everybody's job so that you can be better at your job. And I know that's mainly for directors so that they can delegate stuff to other departments. But I think every department head should know every kind of department um, because that only just helps me help other departments. And I'm especially not the type of DP that just sits back and just does his department and only cares about um, cinematography. Obviously, it takes a lot of focus. But, you know, if other departments aren't working, it's it's uh, really important. But uh, really, I, I was doing the music stuff. I was doing for Macklemore and I was working for Logic for five years. Um, but since then, I've kind of stopped doing music stuff. Um, I mean, as you know, touring is is fun, but really exhausting. Um, being on a tour bus and constantly trying to find internet and worry yep. about other stuff. But um, getting I've been paid. doing... What was that? <laughs> getting paid yeah, properly. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, the tour stuff wasn't bad. It was always like the music videos. Mm -hmm. It was all the outside stuff Um, and just dealing with the money, which I'm like, I don't want to deal with that. I just want to create stuff. Um, But really, uh, while I was doing all that, the funny thing is most people thought that that was like my income or that's what I usually did. But I was actually doing a lot of commercial work that I just wasn't posting because it doesn't, you know, do as well on social and stuff. But uh, I primarily do commercial uh, for a lot of companies and stuff like that. And then I'm doing more filmmaking and storytelling and stuff like, uh, that's amazing. You know, trying to go to festivals and meet more people and just tell stories, which is what I ultimately want to do for, you know, TV and, and uh, film and everything. That's dope. So then recently you just made the the switch to LA or how long have you been down here? I've actually, I keep trying to, somebody keeps asking me that and I, or people keep asking me that I'm trying to figure out, I think it's, I've actually been down here for like five years. I went, okay, I word. moved down to, cause I was born and raised in the Bay area um, I moved to Covina, then North Hollywood, then Woodland Hills, and now I'm in Agora. Nice. Um, so a little bit farther out in the valley, but I was able to, you know, get a get a house out here, so it's a lot more uh, accessible to be able to create stuff and like yeah. ten minutes from Malibu. So you right, know, can't no, complain about amazing. that. Yeah, that's <laughs> sick. That's perfect. I, I I think that there's something about being in this atmosphere and being able to be readily available to get booked, obviously, and and yeah. for you doing commercial work, obviously 
financially it's much better. And yeah. that's why most people choose to do branded content. And uh, for someone who works for artists all the time, that's usually the move. It's like you, your artists are your clickbait to the brands because yep. the brands think it's cool as hell that you work with these artists or whatever. And then they are the ones that actually give you the real money that you get to like kind of turn profit and, and get to play with or whatever. That's cool. So what were you doing up to the point of this, uh, you know, COVID-19 shit? What, what were you doing up till, till it got put, uh, you know, the e break up? Yeah. Well, you know, 2020 obviously is a very weird year, but even before all the COVID stuff, like, uh, the past couple of years were interesting because usually a lot of people say December and January is their slow month. Mm -hmm. And the last like three years, like every time I thought it was going to be, it usually was like one of the crazy two months of my year. Um, because I think that people just had, especially December, everybody's just trying to spend the rest of their money before, um, taxes happen. So, right. um, so this year was a little bit slow and then it started picking up and I had like, you know, job after job coming up and, uh, up until I think it was the day that LA Unified uh, School District like closed schools. Um, I'm not sure the day of that. I was literally going to a production meeting for a two week job at where we were all like, no, we're going to do this still. We're just going to be safe. We're going to take precautions. It's going to be good. And while we were sitting in the meeting with the director, uh, we got emails from three locations that basically said, we're pulling the plug. We're not going to allow you to shoot here because uh, we're closing you know, our studio because we were shooting at a news, a news studio. And some other locations. And then it was just like, you know, one after another, it was like, yeah. I had a job in the Bay area that was canceled. I had another job that was canceled. Uh, some pilots, it was just like one after another. Um, so now that everything's like, everything's prepped and ready to go, it's just a matter of when that's mm -hmm. going to be. Right. So. Which may stumble into pot projects that you may have had booked even farther in the future too. You know yeah. what I mean? Everyone's just dealing with this like scheduling issue now. And also the uncertainty of like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what the fuck is happening? So what have you been doing like while, you know, with this, obviously one of my favorite things about this is that we can talk about how we're kind of pivoting our business because we don't know when this shit's going to end, you know? So for you, yep. um, from a DP standpoint, filmmaker standpoint, what, what have you been doing to either take advantage of this or to pivot the way you're doing your business? Cause obviously, like you said, all productions are like Dunzo. I know there's random yeah. people out there trying to do like two man band run and gun shoots, but you can run into some issues with that. Um, yeah, like definitely. And, and you don't want to be the person that like causes the spread to happen again or something like that. So I don't know. I think it's going to be really interesting, especially like we just did a zoom call with, uh, all my buddies that I was on the logic tour with and we were talking about it and how we don't, I think California, at least they're not going to allow concerts or conventions to happen until they have a vaccine which makes sense. But then that's an entire industry of people that are out of jobs for a very long time. Um, but I've been trying to keep busy with, you know, doing the 3d printing that's been around the clock, um, trying to manage that. And 3d printers are very finicky. And a bunch of us have been constantly chatting, like, how do I fix this? I've had this problem. Well, I didn't have this problem, but this is what I had. Right. Um, so that's been a learning process. Um, I've been building cabinets for my house, so I've never done woodworking. So at least I'm creating in a different way. Yeah, that's dope. Um, and then I've been trying to learn um, like 3D 3D tools. Like I was on Cinema 4D, and now I'm switching to Blender because it's free. But just trying to trying to dabble in a lot of more post work so that I, I'm better able to talk about um, from my side, like knowing what VFX might need in case we're into situations where we don't have a VFX supervisor on set or any of that stuff. And it's just really interesting, especially with like um, what Matt Workman's doing with Cinematography Database and making. Um, what is it? Cine tracer and allowing it to be hooked up to an HTC vibe. So like he's doing virtual production in his house basically. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. About that. That? You don't know about that? No, no. So do, you, do you know Matt Workman? I, I know the name. I don't, I don't know why I'm blank, but I'm also trash at names always. No. So, Oh dude, I'm the worst. <laughs> I'm like really good with faces. I'm really yeah. good with visuals, but yeah, yeah. names I'm terrible. So Matt, um, I've met him like once or twice, but he, he had a plugin for Cinema 4D that allowed you to do previs stuff with like lighting renders and everything. It was really accurate, yeah. Um, but it was really expensive, and you had to know Cinema 4D, and it was really complicated. So I never even tried to get into it because just the pack alone, I think, was like five hundred dollars. Right. So he's using um, what's the game engine? Um, not Steam. Um, oh, the Unreal game engine, and he's okay. developing a game that's on the Steam Store now for both Mac and PC called Cine Tracer. Um, and it's a previs program and it's in beta. It's been in beta. It's going to be in beta for a long time because he's doing it, I think, all himself. 
but it's basically to be able to previs and it's constantly being updated. But right now he's kind of doing, he's blending that um, previs stuff with a mixture of like what they're doing on Mandalorian. Mm. And he's doing, he's like, he has a shoulder rig with a camera um, and shooting a green screen. And then he has like his HTC Vive uh, VR like controller hooked up to it so that it's motion tracked. And so like he'll build the world in his, I think it's in his game, engine um and he'll move around whatever the object is and then the background will move with it just like on mandalorian or something and he's doing that all from his house um it's again it's super in beta and everything but it's really cool to see like what's possible yeah that's so amazing. trying trying to learn that stuff and then just you know listen to other creators like i was just listening to your interview with marcus uh, oh, i listened to your interview with uh, morgan cooper which uh he's a great dude it was super funny when i first met him at the asc clubhouse and then like i think a month later i was doing a job for facebook and i was in kansas city and they hired some like local people and i was like looking through the people they hired for a second unit and i was like this guy's name sounds familiar and i looked him up and i was like oh i just met him a month ago and then like right. a month later bel air dropped and it was just like he's been on a crazy trajectory which is great for him so that's no, right it's so crazy to see that that's good i mean it is a time right now to like really start binging and, and take advantage of the content that exists. Cause I think our problem, and that's what's been pretty common in these interviews is like, it's tough to, in our day to day grind, we have so many goals, right? Like yep. there's so many goals that we're trying to accomplish and, and it's very impossible to like sit down and be like, I really want to learn about making cabinets, you know what I mean? But there may be some <laughs> fire courses or something about woodworking yeah. that now you have, you know, a couple extra hours a day that you could dedicate to that. That's pretty sick. So then what, what, you know, for you, out of all the things that you're suggesting for DPs right now, what do you think is the biggest asset that a DP could jump on if they had to, if they had the extra hour, two hours, three hours a day now yeah. um, to kind of better the craft of being a DP, learn everything that they possibly can? I think uh, studying films, like, like always. Um, I think understanding story better, as always. Um, understanding, for me as a DP, I think the most important thing is learning, knowing how a story cuts together and mm -hmm. not necessarily what's the best or prettiest shot or like the, I don't know, like, uh, uh, was it Oren, Oren Sofran posted like a couple of days ago, his like list of favorite films. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to decide to do that. And when I started looking at the films that were most impactful to me, they weren't always the ones that were like, you know, Roger Deakin cinematography or something like that. It was like about the story. And that's, I think the appreciation of knowing everybody's department, that's, uh, I appreciate the story overall. That's where it comes from. And that's where the best result is. Right. Um, rather than just like, Oh my God, this had amazing cinematography, but the story was garbage and stuff. Sure. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it's using, um, black with no cream and, and using other platforms to just learn about whatever their craft is that they want to focus on, but also, you know, taking the time to step outside of their comfort zones or, learn something that they're not necessarily going to directly apply to them for their job or what they want to do, but they might have some interest in it because it's not, it's not like you have anything else to do right now. Obviously right. if you have to make money, you have to make money. But if you have the ability to not um, worry about that right now, then focus on learning some other stuff. Um, and I think like Cine Tracer and previous stuff and, being able to communicate what your vision is uh, easier is only going to help that. So. And, and, and to go back on what you're saying, like being able to understand every angle makes you a way more efficient player and better yep. to work with entirely because, you know, a director is going to love that you understand how to speak to art department or how to, you know I mean? All these different, yep. it, from the bottom up, if you're, if yep. you have a lot of knowledge at the bottom and understand how things are moving at the top, it makes you easier to talk to, you know what I mean? Just yep. to have that awareness is so key. That's, that's yeah. Very powerful information. If you are right, out of like your most recent projects, um, proud of them, obviously I'm assuming what, uh, if someone could spend some time, cause I think this is what's cool is that you have content out there that people could consume. And one of the biggest tips I always told people is like, if you find someone that you look up to start digesting everything that they have. And that's yeah. what you're some, you're, um, you know, suggesting right now, what would you tell people to start with from your Rolodex of content, commercial and, or maybe it's a uh, short or low budget, whatever it may be. Um, what, what are some top projects that you've done that you would suggest to people to check out from your, from your uh, resume? Oh, that's tough. Um, 
Well, I think for starters, just because it's where how we've uh, known each other would be like the Macklemore documentaries that we did. Um, it was like a five part um, series of documentaries we did on their the Heist World Tour, which is when they were at the biggest because of like thrift shop and everything. Um, that was really cool learning process just because it was like most of us weren't documentary filmmakers. We had never done most of us had never gone on tour before. So it was figuring it out every day and then also just trying to make it more story driven base and more emotional than just like, Hey, look, we went to this place and we played, uh, they played songs here. And right. then we went to this place. It was just like, there was some really key emotional stuff that, um, our editor, who's also a DP, Johnny Valencia, um, like put together. It was just every time it was incredible. Um, so I would say that, but for more recent stuff, um, I did a star Wars short film last year. Um, it's called birth of a monster. Um, that one I'm probably one of the most proud of. Um, there's some issues that I have with it personally, but <laughs> overall, like, I think that the, we had, um, Tim Martin, our director, he also did all the costumes. He works on the Mandalorian. Wow. So like we have, we have miniatures that look exactly like stuff from return of the Jedi. We have, um, costumes that are legit. We have just, uh, VFX that are incredible. Um, but we try to keep it very practical and we only have like two or three actual VFX shots in it. Um, but everything from like, I posted it on Reddit. We just hit 2 million views actually like a couple days ago, Holy shit. but it has, um, every comment was so, um, oh, what is it? Uh, Not I can't mean. Think of, <laughs> no, I, I can't think of the word. Every, every comment that was positive was talking about how it felt like it was a star Wars film. It looked like it was a star Wars film. It sounded, and it was like, even if people didn't like, like the film or something, they, we nailed all the other parts that I was really happy about and wanted to nail, especially yeah. in my department. Um, especially, uh, we, I got it colored at uh, company three and just did an incredible job with it. Um, yeah, I think that would probably be my favorite. The one video that I think a lot of people that I work with that or found me is probably my logic, take it back music video that I shot for Andy Hines. We shot that at universal studios on the airplane set and it's a one take. Nice. Um, a, lo a lot of people love that video. I, I'm always wanting to be better. So there's like tons of little things about it that I wish was better, but, um, it was definitely, that's definitely like a lot of people like that video. And I've done a lot of one takes. I did a Western one take. I think that's online now called, uh, the awful kind. And it's a 22 minute one take. Holy shit. Um, no cuts. There's eight actors, two horses. Um, but we did it all practical with a movie pro. Um, I had my operator with the ready rig on inside and then I was outside with the mimic so that I could worry about framing. He could worry about where he had to be. Um, that one I'm like one of the most proud of, um, for sure. Jesus Christ. That's a, <laughs> that's a brutal <laughs> 22 minutes. Shout out to his back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like, we were thankfully we had a full day of rehearsal with the camera on location, but it was just like that whole day was figuring out how are the batteries going to last 22 minutes? How is the camera not going to overheat? Cause it was middle of the summer and we shot in, um, uh, where is it? Um, blue, blue sky ranch, I think where they shoot uh, Westworld. Right. 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 Um, cool and some there. other, yeah. So it was just like all the intricacies of technically, how do we get this achieved? Let alone just the creative side of it. Right. And I how do you light it? Yeah, exactly. It, you said it is available or you don't know yet? I think it is. Let me, uh, let me see if it is. I, what I remember, especially like when you guys got to test, because for people who don't understand, the, the movie hasn't always been here or yeah. the DJI Ronin. That, they haven't always existed. So people had to figure out how to do the shit with real steady cams, And then now they're switching it out and having the opportunity to diversify the steady shot. But yep. when you guys did the tour. I, it's so funny that I remember, and I'm trying to remember who, who my homie was that was nerding out with me about the movie. It was someone from college, but I would like, we literally were trying to find fan footage. We found, I remember finding fan footage somewhere where we saw one of you with the movie in the crowd. We're like, there it is. It, it, they have it. They do have it. That's how they've been doing this shit. And just being mind blown that Macklemore was able to obtain that shit. And then I think I saw, did you have two of them? Um, I think on tour we had one. Well, so the, the reason we got it is I got joined up with them, which I think follows along with like kind of your story about hitting people up mm -hmm. and like taking the initiative. Cause I think, uh, I think kind of like how Marcus said in your last interview, which is there's amazing content creators or, um, 
filmmakers. I like that better. I don't like content creators as much, right. but, uh, or influencers, but, um, yeah, sure. there's a lot of amazing filmmakers that are talented. They're just not seen by people. And so it's like, how do you get seen or the opportunity like you did? And it's like emailing people, um, at random times or reaching out. Cause you never know when those are going to happen. But, um, I did a music video with Macklemore called white walls. Um, it was a 18 day music video. Um, and we had the prototype for the movie and we literally, there was a sticker on it that we called it the Macla movie because it was like one of the prototypes. That's so sad. Um, and because of that, Ryan Haug, who started motion state, um, he got to have one of the first ones off the production line. And so we took that on tour and I right. think we had one. So white walls was before th- that's yep. where it was. It wasn't from tour. It was from white walls because there was a shot that you guys are, cause wasn't he standing, I, was Macklemore performing on like a roof? So yeah, that was honestly one of the craziest, uh, story that was at Dick's burgers in Seattle, which is yeah. like an icon. It's like not in and out, but it's like their iconic bur- local burger shop. And so the idea was that we were going to have this free concert on top of the roof and everybody was going to be around us. And when we got up there, it was, you know, we had to pay for security and gates and bathrooms. And it was, it was an event basically. Right. So we were like, we're not going to do it. But somebody from Dick's told the radio station, that it was happening even though it wasn't. And then they put it, it was like on the news, it was on Reddit, it was on the radio that morning. And we were like, (laughs) we're so screwed. So we showed up and there were 5,000 people in the streets surrounding the burger joint. Jesus Christ. Um, So we ended up giving what we wanted for free basically, but we had had five cameras going that night. I think two or three movies going. So there was a shot in the video somewhere where I see the shadow it was the yeah. shadow of the movie on someone's shoulder. And that I, just seeing the bar, yep. I was like, fuck, they have it. Like, this is crazy. Cause at that time it was like Vincent, Lef- uh, um, Vincent Lafayette, yeah. Lafayette. He had made the, the initial like movie teaser that everyone saw and was like, holy shit, what is this? Like the dude on the rollerblades or whatever, the chick yep. on the rollerblades, whatever. And then you guys having it blew my mind. And that shit was so inspiring to know that it was obtainable by in my opinion, you know, you're not, you're not the ones in Hollywood making the films. You guys are still the independents that are trying to figure out how to make create creative content and you had access to it. That shit was just motivating, man. That was crazy. What an experience. That's 5,000 people (laughs) showing up. Dude, it was, yeah, it was something else. And I, uh, man, I'll never forget that night. That was so much fun. And so just like crazy, like, is this really happening? And yeah, the shot you're talking about, I think the crew, like, walked behind the crowd and just started walking through the crowd to get to the burger shop with the camera just held above their head. Um, And that was also back when there, you had those really bad movie batteries that like didn't last very long and were finicky and you didn't know if they're about to die and all that stuff. Oh my God. Um, (laughs) To wrap this up, I know uh, we got to go. One thing that you've been doing that isn't about creativity that you've been doing to kill some time. Is there any TV shows, Netflix, and you've been doing anything reading books? Or has it just been 3D uh, printed wife, like a mofo? My wife's a producer, so she's been checking out like Quibi and stuff, and we've been checking that out. I'm not, the content's not amazing, but I do, I think what they're doing, how seamless it, like, it is to go from here to here. Love that. Like it's really seamless. Um, but I've been playing a lot of Warzone, Call of Duty Same. Warzone with a bunch of my friends uh, and other filmmakers, but. Hell yeah. Um, what else? Oh, I mean, Little Dicky Show, Dave is hilarious. It's great. Um, been watching a bunch of that stuff. Westworld is finally to me is finally started to get good again. Um, that's right. About it took though. a dip in season two. Season one was like cool. And then yep. season two, I was like, man, but I didn't even finish it. Cause I was like, man, and I was busy. So I yep. never checked it out. I, I want to catch up cause season three looks nuts. Season three is gorgeous. I think some of the stuff they're doing this last episode, they start playing with uh, genres, which is really cool. Mm. I think it could have been done better in a different way and been more impactful, but I think it's still really cool. But yeah, the writing is so much better in this season. Season two is like you could have cut five episodes and made the season and right. it would have been better. But. Yeah, of course, man. Cool. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to have to add you on Warzone so we can fucking kill some people. And then, uh, Definitely. yeah, we'll link to all your information will be in the description below, but yeah, man, stay safe out there. Thanks man. You too. Yo, thank you, Nick, for coming on the show. How cool was that shit? The 3d printer, like the fact that he's, Doing that with a bunch of filmmakers is so cool to give back um, to the frontline workers who are out there. Uh, if anyone can contribute something like that, please do. All right, next we have Israel Shoots. Let's jump into it right now. All right, people, Israel's in the house. Uh, What's good, bro? What's How, up, you man? How you doing? I'm good, um, bro. Your space looks crazy, man. It's coming together. 
you know dude last time i i was on the podcast i was in your kitchen you were definitely indeed in my <laughs> kitchen the, I, I just went back and was watching it and the intro is so funny because i just like posted up in front of my desk and i'm pretty sure there's like a bowl of cereal in the back i'm like man we've yeah kinda, we've kind of climbed the ladder since then That's, how, yeah, how you, you been i've been good man i've been trying to stay busy you know but since yeah. then i've been really I've been really busy been working with different new clients and stuff like that yeah, I noticed that you've, so obviously when we talked at that point, you told the story of starting to work with Anderson and, yeah, like, I was, yep. and, yeah. and getting that job. And then since then, yeah, you have been working with different clients. Can you kind of like catch us up, like where you've been since, since then and like things that you've been working on since then? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, since then I, I, I uh, was working with Anderson back still for, for another like year or year and a half after that. I forget when we, when we did that podcast. So I was working a lot with him and then, um, I went another route and I started working with his band, the free nationals a lot. And then I started working with like other brands and, um, worked a lot with big night, which is like Dan Bilzerian's brand. Right. Yeah. And I then, saw uh, that his party. Yeah. You guys have been like documenting his parties, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of them, one That's of them? he only throws like two a year. Yeah. And, and they're fucking out of control. <laughs> yeah. Out like, of control. So insane. Like certain people can't get in like, Someone was commented on my page like David Dobrik couldn't even get in. <laughs> like, really? Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. I watched. I watched a um, a vlog. Some dude. I wish I can't think of his name. I'm sorry for this guy, but he started a channel recently where he just do, does these really extreme videos. And one of them was I'm gonna sneak into Dan Bilzerian's oh, yeah. party. I and saw that. Did you see it? And he yep. like tries to he's play a... the part like he's working on the camera crew <laughs> and all this shit. And it's funny because I was there doing that. Like when he was there, like trying to get in, Imitating I was definitely the job. That's yeah. So crazy. <laughs> but that's dope. How how did you get looped in with them? Uh, my friend, she's a, a graphic designer for uh, his brand. Oh, dope. For the Ignite brand. So um, she she was always talking to me about like, oh, you know, we 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 could use you as a photographer for for some of our um, campaigns and stuff. Right. And then, you know, she it was always just like she always talked about it, but then it actually came to fruition. And then I uh, one gig led to another, and then to another, and then to another. How then, how was uh, how was um, covering something like that? Because I feel like I, I'm assuming it was a bigger team, right? So you did primarily yeah. photo or video. Uh, I've done some photos for just like some uh, <clears throat> some products, um, some campaign for the products and stuff like that. And then I also did uh, something for like a social media launch. Okay. I don't know if that's announced yet though. And then I did the party coverage, and that was there was a lot of a lot of people shooting. shooting. Yeah. yeah, but it was kind of weird because I just managed my own little team and we had our own um, assets that we had to provide. Oh, and word. then there was there was people doing like there was like different teams of, of videographers. Is that crazy? It was it was a little insane. I was like, I was kind of confused as to like who was doing what. But well, they may have had like a, you never know if he's like shooting a documentary. So you may have exactly. like a documentary crew shooting exactly long yeah. raw takes where you're trying to just get really high impact social snippets essentially yeah. right yep exactly yeah like i was editing like within an hour for for social media jesus and so yeah. what you had did you guys your goal was to just knock out a video like <clears throat> yeah knock out a video recap. that night and then a recap the next day it's pretty it's pretty simple yeah that's yeah. dope that's cool yeah. but it was fun i mean it was cool being at that in the atmosphere it was bizarre as hell yeah man he's got like for people who don't know especially my mom because she listens to every episode and i say that every time <laughs> i'm always like if someone doesn't know something i'll just reference my mom so i can explain it that's to perfect. her yeah. and you'll, if you don't know you don't have to whatever um but like this dude is this like i don't know how many how much money he's got multi-million dollar man who's just a legend workout fucking buff guy who chills with tons and tons of naked chicks and that's his life <laughs> and now he's got like a is it a weed company is that what the company is uh well they um they do cannabis uh they do cbd they do cb oh, actually i don't know if i can say that yet they do uh they do a lot of products they also do uh vodka tequila oh they shit do, so it's, they got drinks shit. too yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah so they just like crush that shit it's not like a commercial right now <laughs> i know but his, his parties his parties are like think about the amount of money that they, they put into their brand and then they throw these massive parties at this Crazy house that's party. like the house is like worth millions and millions of dollars too. And they yeah, just like yeah. turn it all the way up. So that's pretty wild. I want to, maybe we, we could put, um, Darren, when you're listening to this, you should drop in some of the footage that he, from the recap. So we can just like 
put yeah, you know, yeah, a video yeah. to the thing for our audio listeners. You need to tap in on YouTube, all right? Um, nah, so, yeah. so okay, so that happened. That was like right before this shit went down, right? Was that one right of your last before, jobs? Yeah, I was working, yeah, I was working also with Wiz. Uh, I was doing some of Wiz's uh, stuff as well, which is really, really cool. That's dope. Um, because I was, I had just got, I got in the game and I like was working with Anderson for so long and that was pretty much like all I knew. Right. And uh, after working with him, it, I, I wanted some experience of working with a, a new artist, one that like didn't know me. And, you know, it was a whole different, whole different situation. How so? Like you I'm, building the relationship? I mean, well, with Anderson, like we were, we were buddies before. So, you know, got mm-hmm. it, got the job like through him. This was more of like the label putting me on. So I had that kind of, that kind of like yeah interaction with him but it was still really good um but um yeah then then this happened <laughs> right so how, <laughs> how how much did you actually get to work with wiz before it kind of like i worked with wiz um about four or five times and doing what like day-to-day type content or yeah day to, day-to-day content i um yeah pretty much all day-to-day content That's yeah dope. like I, I like shot his um his son bashes his little birthday party Oh right. I, I um shot this uh, McQueen event that he did. I went to a school where he gave away like a bunch of uh, instruments to kids. Um did a basketball game for him and then I went I, I went to a couple gigs where he never even showed up but I, <laughs> I was just <laughs> <laughs> Right, it is there. Yeah, yeah, and then and then the craziest one was we we went to Utah and uh, I flew on my first fucking private jet with Wiz Khalifa. That was the first time I met him actually. On the PJ? Yeah. Oh shit! And it was just me, him, and his bodyguard. It was bizarre, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, I think I, just, I saw the footage from that or whatever. Yeah. I can't remember what he said. He like said some funny shit on the plane, well, right? It was because we, I show up, we fly, on the PJ, and he has his shades on the whole time, right? And I was told by his creative director, whatever you do, bro, just like just don't stop shooting, just shoot everything, because you never know when he's gonna give you something. Right, right, right. So I was just sitting like across from him just with my camera. Like this is my first time meeting him. And I can't tell if he's awake or if he's asleep. Damn. You're just filming <laughs> or if, a yeah. little body. He's slumped in his seat just like. Totally, bro. And he was knocked out. And then. Uh, or or he was wide awake and he was like, how long can I make this dude film me doing nothing? Let's just probably, see. Probably, man. Testing, putting me to the test. test. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's and then uh, we landed and he gave me he gave me some good content. And I was like, all right, all right cool, cool, cool. We're, we're, we're getting into something. He was being funny with the camera. And then we do the show. And um, it was kind of a crazy story. So I was shooting from on stage. And it was my first time shooting him. So I, I was kind of getting used to like his movements and like how he moves on stage and like yeah, right. the cues for the fucking uh, CO2 shit. Yeah. All that, all that type of shit. And then it was a packed, packed club. It was for Sundance. Um, and I remember I was like, Oh damn, I, I want to get in the pit and get a shot from the front. So I don't have all these just different, so I have a different angle and I jump in the pit and then, at that point, it's when security was kicking everybody out the pit. And I know this happens to a lot of us when we're in the pit and we have to show like, no, 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 we work yeah, for that artist. And they're like, no, we don't care. We don't care. Yeah. And I was I was arguing and then I get kicked out and I. <laughs> you got booted? Yeah, they like didn't believe me. It was so annoying. Oh my and I, God. I catch a little attitude sometimes. Yeah, of course. And like someone's like in my way when I'm right. like focused, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I remember uh, I ran into this other photographer like that I had made friends with that night. He takes me out the back way and leaves me. And when I'm in the back way, I, I'm in this like alley type situation and there's a shit ton of cops. And then there's like this one cop and he's yelling and they're talking about canceling the show. Oh, shit. And I'm just there and I'm like, oh, shoot. So I just press record on my camera and just so I could film it. Right. So I caught a little bit of that. I caught the interaction. And then next thing you know, all the cops rush the stage. I'm stuck in the back. They won't let me go back in. So I I don't have that footage, but I think I know someone who does, but right. Apparently the cop goes on stage, but he's dressed as like a civilian (laughs) because he's like a, he's like, I don't know the guy's the chief of police. Okay. Right. 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 So they're not like always in uniform. Yeah. Yeah. So he's just got the badge. 
but Wiz is on stage performing on this. Like, imagine like this old 50 year old man just walking <laughs> on stage. I'm surprised he didn't get smoked by security. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then he grabs a joint from Wiz and it's like, you just cancel or whatever. Wiz grabs it back, takes a hit and just blows it in his face. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. The cop, so, go, the cop goes to grab the other arresting officers. And it was at that point that, you know, Wiz just made the escape. He got out? <clears throat> he got out. Holy he shit. Drove, drove, to, drove super fast to the, to the private jet. And that's where I can come in. I meet him back up at the private jet. And that's where that footage starts. That's why he's like, uh, okay. hey, now we're, now we're free. Damn. So that clip is super funny because. Oh, my God. He's just laughing the whole time. He's like, they can't touch what? This <laughs> hops sick. on the PJ, hauls yeah. back, <laughs> eats some peanuts. Yeah, fuck, that's crazy. That's a that, dope first time. That's yeah. a solid first experience. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Did, yeah, was he hyped that you got the cop footage outside? I'm sure he was. Yeah, yeah he was. Right. La- he was laughing. Like at that point, we were just laughing. Oh my god, that's funny as fuck. So that's yeah. dope. That's cool. That, so change of pace works well. Obviously, like the experience yeah, yeah, that yeah, you've yeah, gained yeah. spending so much time with Anderson teaches you how to obviously work around an artist deliverables, things like that, trying to oh, get yeah, content. Sure. So when yeah. you get in and with someone like that, it obviously comes to fruition, right? Oh, definitely. You just got to focus on what you got to provide and, and just get the work done. Right. And also just like stay out of their way. Yeah. You know, but right. also show some, some kind of personality. Yeah. And, yeah. and also just like being available, like you being willing to put the camera up the entire time. Cause you never know when the dude's going to start doing some wild shit. And if you have yeah. the camera off or you miss a shot, everyone's yeah. going to be asking you what it was. And it could even be getting on your ass about why you weren't in the show when it got shut down. But that's, that's what I thought was going to happen. That's what I thought was going to happen. I was like, fuck man, I fucked up. Right. But when I got the footage of like the actual police officers in the back saying, we're going to shut this down. Like no one has that. No, so at that, least no I got, I got, that. I got something to tell a story. And honestly, bro, you have you a club with like two or 300 people or how many, however many people were in there filming on their phones. So you can get the interaction if you really need it. I guarantee you that shit exists somewhere. They oh yeah. No, I've, I've been in communication trying to get it. But at this point, the episode, the day to day episode already came out. Oh, right. And there's like, you know, there's a, you know, there's, there's more to the story than that, like when it comes to the venue and right, 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 right. You know, legal stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, so, yeah. that's crazy yeah. though. So okay, so you start working with him, you've been working yeah. with different clients and things like that. This shit happens. COVID, yeah, hits, then, right? Damn, so we're yeah. all strapped up to our house. How how has that transition been for you? You know, like obviously you you go to work with Wiz because Wiz goes to places where he has to make appearances, and now you can't make appearances anymore. So now there's no. Yeah, there's, there's just no, there's no work. All, all work is completely halted. Yeah. I, I was luckily like in the process of finishing an edit, a big edit. So when this was hitting, I was kind of already just doing that. Right. Um, but now it's, now it's just no, no work, just zero. Just how have you been positioned? I, I, so we could talk about the edit. Um, you're working yeah. on a documentary that you're like co-directing and put together and producing yeah, for yeah. the free nationals, which is yeah. Anderson's band, right? Yeah. 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 So I've been oh. working on that for about six months now. Right. Just shooting, 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 editing it. Yeah. And, so um, what's the goal with that project first? And then we can talk a little bit how that's kind of set you up to take care of like this first month of quarantine. You yeah. Know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that project is just kind of uh, an introduction to the band as just the free nationals. So it's um it's this the documentary is meant to just introduce you to each individual character as who they are and tell a little bit about their story about where they come from and just get to know them a little bit better. It's not it doesn't really go much deeper than that. Right. It's, it's simple. It's funny. It's it's entertaining. So so was I, that was that a, was the band formed before Anderson in, like got them or was that a band <clears throat> that Anderson started having be his band when he played yeah. shows. It was a it was a band. They were all friends, right? And they got together, and then they started playing gigs, like before Anderson was Anderson, right? So they've always been together. Oh, cool! That's dope. And then they've always played together, and then they they uh, realized that they really liked making music on their own. Mm-hmm. So then they they gave making an album a shot, and it was 
it's been a successful album so far. Yeah, they have the they have a billboard like literally right from the right around the corner from my office. Oh, that, that's sick. up there. Yeah, yeah, I was, like, yeah. Explain yeah. that to my girl. I'm like, that's Anderson's band. Like they yeah. play. You know, I'm like, breaking it down for her. That's dope. Yeah, that would be a cool <laughs> intro so people can oh, for sure. really learn about them. Yeah, and and this was meant to come out. Like, I mean, you know, things always change mm. with like when something comes out, when it doesn't, or whatever. But um, this was meant to come out kind of like around the same time as the album did, but now it's coming out a little bit later. And we wanted to have like a premiere and, and do the whole nine, but then this hit. Right. But now we're going to try to take advantage of everyone being at home and wanting content so that they, they'll actually, I think this will do better now yeah, of if course. it's released during quarantine. So we're aiming to do, release it during, during like this time. What what's your guys' plan for release? Is it like a YouTube release or is this probably like a, a network? YouTube or a possible Twitch, oh, like right. a, a, like an a li- like like a live event, you know, like a Q and A and all that with the yeah. band and with That'd me. That'd be dope. Yeah, That'd that would be, be dope. Tight. It'd be cool because then that'll be a global thing, you know. Mm-hmm. If you if you do a premiere in LA, then it's just in LA. Right. Yeah. But You're like limited you, to hundred people yeah. or whatever. So it's kind of like a blessing in disguise. Yeah. No, that'll be cool. So then, so what else have you been doing? Like as that project's going to wrap up at some point, we have no idea when this shit's going to end. How have you been like repositioning? I saw you started like vlogging. And yeah. Yeah. That's a content. huge part, man. Yeah. Cause I mean, with what we do, we, you know, like with nine to five, you know, we're, we don't do nine to five is what I'm trying right. to say. So like as an editor, as a videographer or whatever, there's a lot of times where I'm just at home anyways, just mm. editing. So I've kind of, I'm kind of used to just being at home. Right just working on my stuff or doing pre-planning for any, any things. But then, um, so in that sense, it hasn't been too different, but then I get like this itch where I'm like, ah, I want to go like shoot. I want to get on a plane or I want to go shoot a show, you know? Right. So it's a little bit of both, man. Like mentally I'm, I'm doing pretty, pretty good mentally just being at home. But then there's that itch of just wanting to go out and shoot. Right. Or just go out and grab a damn beer. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's pretty much impossible at this point. Shit. Yeah, yeah. But so um, then, I've been, yeah, I've been, um, I've been trying to create like a routine for myself. Mm. Um, and this, this, this quarantine has really kind of allowed me to hone in on a routine, which is something kind of new for me because it's like a, building a routine without the distractions of like friends or, so any outside influence like being like you know to, to kind of get you to come out so that's been a, that's been really good for me I've what have been, been what have been some of the steps that you've been doing to create the routine or like what is your routine um you know just working out and like the morning is good for me that's good it helps me start my day off um i've been doing like online photoshop classes because i'm not really too good at photoshop surprisingly like i just don't really i didn't really know it but right. i'm sorry Learn Photoshop. I'm starting to learn After Effects, Dope. stuff like that. Stuff that, that I've always wanted to do, but never really got into it. Yeah. So I feel like a lot it. of people have been t- taking advantage of like master classes and coursework. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what, for sure. What a solid investment. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Linda and LinkedIn, all that. Is that um, what you've been using? Is Linda? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, That's it's dope. been pretty good. Um, life life hack, by the way, for anyone listening, if you have a college ID, you can get Linda for free. I found that at the end of my college career that I could have been getting it for free this whole fucking time. I, I didn't learned, pay for it. I learned at the end too, bro. I was like, what? <laughs> like literally, I, I swear to God, it was the last week of college where someone's like, yeah, if you have a, you just got to go to the university portal or whatever. I'm like, university portal, what? Mm. I'm like this entire time in college, I've wanted to use that as a resource to learn shit and couldn't do it because of that. Fuck. Yeah. It's that's funny. But yeah, I'm, not, I'm, on, I'm on it now. So that's been that's keeping good. me busy, man. Yeah. And then um, the vlog shit, bro. Like I... I used to do uh, my YouTube channel like two, three years ago. Yeah. I like was doing the vlog, uh, the whole vlogging thing back then. Um, but I would do it like, I think I would do one once a month mm-hmm. and it would be pretty long and I would wait for something epic to happen. And then uh, I started taking, that was like before I got into it with Anderson. And ironically, when I started working with Anderson, I stopped doing my vlog. Which yeah, of was, course. When I, this- I could, when the I first couldn't. epic thing happens in your life and you fucking stop doing, <laughs> stop documenting. I know. It. Cause I was like, Oh, I got to focus. Like, yeah. I was like, no, I have to focus on work. Like fuck yeah, this course. YouTube shit. Right. And now I'm like, no, nah, man, I, I, I want to start that back up again. So I started it back up again, but with more of a stricter schedule every Wednesday, that way I could hold myself accountable 
that way on like Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I'm like editing all day. I'm making trailers. I'm doing assets. Like, right. like if I have a deadline, which is really, really helpful. That's great. And then on the, on the weekends, like I brainstorm new ideas, new bits and stuff like that. So that's, been, that's been like the most exciting thing that I've been doing. Yeah. It's something for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it documents this weird ass fucking time. You know what Facts. I mean? Like what a weird, cause it was Facts. cool. You were like, went out and you were like riding your bike around in yeah. the city and shit. And it's just like, it's eerie, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just a real moment in time, bro. After we're done with this, I'm about to go. By that time, this is out. It'll already be out because it, it'll be tomorrow. But yeah. I'm gonna go to the bank with <laughs> with the mask. The bank? <laughs> yeah, because I gotta go get quarters because I need to go do laundry. Oh right. And I was like, I, I was like, I might as well like film it and yeah. have it be funny. Like, hey, am I allowed to be here with a yeah, mask? Right. Like, They're <laughs> like, please, God, be here with a mask. Yeah. Like, fuck. <laughs> we we do not think you're. No one's robbing us right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> I thought about it the other day. I'm like, damn, is that a weapon for like someone to walk in and be like, up to the window? I have COVID. I'll oh, come in, in this shit. bitch unless you give me fucking all your money. Damn, you know what I mean, that's crazy. Who knows? It's <laughs> fucking crazy. Uh, I know. I want to wrap this up. I know. Um, like with you taking advantage of like the time to take tutorials and and really brush up on your skills and, and create routines yeah. for yourself. Is there anything else you could like recommend to people? Is there a TV show, movie, book, anything you've read that someone could check out in the meantime, like during quarantine? Have you found anything like that outside of the tutorials? Um, damn, I don't really <laughs> like like re- people have been asking me for like recommended shows and stuff, and I just can't like I'd be blanking out all the time. But I'm gonna check out the uh, the LA originals. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet either, but a lot of people have been telling me Everybody. you should check it out because uh, apparently like Emilio started off like as a touring and stuff like that. So yeah, I think it would be good that. for all creators to watch that. Yeah, yeah, let's all check that out, people. LA Originals yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. Let's check it out. I'm, I'm excited think, for it. I think just like the main thing is just uh, what I wanted to, to kind of like say to people is just like if you have an idea – I mean, now is the time to really just go about it and don't let yourself get in your way. Use whatever you can. You know, it doesn't have to be like the best equipment, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Just take this time to kind of just go for it. Take that leap and don't let yourself get in the way. Don't worry about perception and like what people think about you. Just take the time to actually get something started yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Right. Fan, man. All right, bro. Well, I appreciate you doing this. Quarantine chill. And he's got the hoodie on. Oh, yeah. Fire. Yeah. yeah. Fire link, random link down below, hundred percent right. off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's give them out for free. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're, we'll probably shut the site down. I talked to Gavin. I was like, we got we might need to shut the site down because we got beat to the punch on people coming up with the ideas. Just Yo, like when, it. I, when I got that email, that email was kind of like alarming because it's just, we hate COVID nineteen. Your item is shipped, and I was like, what the fuck? You're is like, this? oh shit, I forgot. Yeah, you forgot you bought I it. Was, that's was, tight. Right, nah, cool, that's yeah. swaggy. Yeah, sick. <laughs> all right, bro. I appreciate you. Links. I'm gonna put all the links and stuff in the bio yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. To, your, to your socials and your youtube channel so we yeah, can get people sure, go man. sub on that appreciate you man hope, hope you're doing good and I'll, I'll see you soon hopefully man for sure for sure hopefully. all right later player all right man peace yo that's it for today's episode of the quarantine and chill segment of the podcast thank you for listening links will be in the description below um for you to follow all of our guests and make sure you support them and show them some love if you really did think that was awesome go shoot them a message like go comment on their instagram post or something be like yo i just heard you on that at black with no cream podcast and uh it was the best podcast i've ever heard and i subscribed and i even joined their patreon and i bought their merch and that's how much i love the podcast do something like that you know what i'm saying uh because we appreciate that support but for real if you did like this podcast just do us a solid send a link to the episode to someone that you think would enjoy hearing it because we know that you're not the only one you know um but other than that, we love you. Um, subscribe to us on any podcast platform that you're listening to so you can stay up to date with all of our releases. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Black Window Cream and turn that little notification thing on so you actually see when we tell you about new episodes that are coming out. We're always sharing like little snippets of upcoming episodes. So yeah, that's about it. All right, cool. I love you. Um, you know what I always say. We'll see you in a few days, you bitch.